When we think about they may all be one, I want to think about one person who is almost never talked about in church. Definitely almost never preached about in church. He's on the cover of our bulletin. He's now on the screen. We heard about him in our first reading for today. He was one of the 12 apostles. His name is Matthias. Although at our first worship service, our reader read it as Matthias. And I told him, I don't know which one of us is correct. It might be Matthias. It might be Matthias. It might be tomato. It might be tomato. Right? It doesn't, I don't know how to pronounce it because we don't talk about Matthias hardly ever, even though he was one of the 12 apostles. And in fact, when we had the prayer of the day today, I was listening because I knew that very few of us would know for sure how to say Matthias. It would depend on who we would ask. And the prayer of the day was, Almighty God, you choose your servant Matthias. If you could have heard yourself during the prayer, it was so adorable. You said, Almighty God, you chose your servant to be numbered among the twelve. <laughs> it was like, Almighty God, you chose your servant. Let the pastor insert name here. And it makes sense. Uh, he's someone that we don't talk about very much. In fact, the only time that we hear about Matthias in the entire Bible, there's only one time in the entire Bible where we hear about Matthias, and it is in our Bible reading for today. We never hear anything about Matthias, the whole rest of Scripture. And when you think about our hymnal, our hymnal is filled with 800-some hymns, and there is only one hymn with one verse in it that talks about Matthias. So Matthias is one of the apostles but we don't hear how, hardly anything about it. Any idea why we don't hear about Matthias? Anybody? Why? There's nothing in the Bible about him, so we don't talk about him. But actually, what in the one passage about him that does allow us to know something about him tells us that he wasn't the original. He wasn't one of the original twelve. He was a replacement disciple, right? He was a backup disciple. He was on the bench until the coach called his number, right? And we hear in our first reading for today about how he was chosen as a replacement apostle. And it was because Judas had betrayed Jesus, and so suddenly the twelve had become eleven. And Peter, the leader of the group, had a problem with just having eleven. Because he said, Jesus called twelve of us. We can't go on and do ministry in the world just with 11 of us, we need 12. And so he called the first congregational meeting of the Christian church. He said, everybody huddle together. Jesus has ascended, and we need to come up with our 12. And so they called this congregational meeting. They probably had 100 or so people to choose from. And they narrowed it down. It tells us prayerfully that they prayerfully narrowed it down to two people that could replace Judas. All right, so they narrowed it down by people that had been following Jesus as well. There were people who saw Jesus teach, saw Jesus preach, saw people Jesus heal, and even saw Jesus raise from the dead. There were people besides just the twelve that saw that happen. And so Matthias was one of those. And it sounds beautifully spiritual. They prayerfully discussed who should be the one. And then our Bible reading says, and then they cast lots to decide who would be the one. Does that sound weird for you? Right? So they're all prayerful, they're taking it really seriously, and then they roll some dice. Or then they flip a coin. Right? Well, we can't really decide. Both of them are pretty good. Let's just uh, flip a coin. And, hey, it's Matthias! Woo uh, you need to know that actually that was a common thing 2,000 years ago. It is not how we run the church today. We had a council meeting on Tuesday. We had some important decisions today. We did not flip a coin. <laughs> We prayerfully considered uh, what we needed to do, and we continued to ask uh, for God's guidance. But actually, 2,000 years ago, they would cast lots, and they trusted that God was in the process. And, and maybe God was in the process. I believe that God was in the process of that as well, right? But someone uh, put together a cute little cartoon that describes how they got to the final two. Before Matthias is chosen to be the new disciple, there were several elimination rounds using a new sophisticated high-tech selection technique, rock, paper, scissors. So, someone tried to make fun of it and make it cutesy and make it funny, but actually there was nothing funny about it. How do you replace one of 
The people chosen by Jesus himself. It's pretty serious, right? And so they prayerfully consider it, and then verse 26 says, And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was added to the eleven apostles. I think one of the reasons that I like Matthias so much is because he reminds me of my favorite football player on my favorite football team. He reminds me of Aaron Rodgers. Go Packers. I know I'm not in Packer country, so I'll tread gently as I talk about Aaron Rodgers. But if you don't know anything about football or you don't know anything about the Green Bay Packers, you need to know that Aaron Rodgers wasn't drafted by the Packers to be their quarterback. Do you know what he was drafted by the Packers for? To be the backup quarterback. Exactly. All us Packer fans, when we drafted a quarterback, we were like, we don't need a quarterback. We already have the greatest quarterback in the world, Brett Favre. Right? And so we're... Okay, what was that? You're critiquing Brett Favre. Oh, you just were talking. I, okay. Excuse you. Bless you. So we already had Brett Favre. We already had this great quarterback, right? And so we knew, all right, he really was drafted just to be a backup quarterback. But Aaron Rodgers knew more. He said, yeah, I'll be a backup quarterback. I'll sit on the bench, but I'm going to do exactly what Brett Favre does. Everything he learns, I will learn. Everything that he does for training, I will train, so that when the coach says my number, I will be ready to go. Brett Favre eventually retired, sort of. I heard he's still thinking about a comeback, right? If you, you maybe need to be in Wisconsin to know how often he came back. Uh, he is done. He's officially retired. In fact, they're going to retire his jersey. And when he retired, Aaron Rodgers' number was called up. And he was like the Lions, right? He was the replacement quarterback. And what's so cool about Aaron Rodgers is you, it's cut off at the bottom. So I brought my own Aaron Rodgers jersey. What number is Aaron Rodgers? How many apostles were there? So if Matthias was wearing a jersey that would have his number on it. Matthias would be number 12. Because he was the apostle that filled uh, Judas's role, and uh, he became number, number 12. So I've always wondered if verse 26 is actually translated in as good of a way as it could be translated. When you're translating from Greek to English, there's always a little bit of stuff lost in translation. So verse 26 says, and they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was added to the eleven apostles. That's good, except I think that this is a more accurate translation. And they cast lots for them, and a lot fell on Matthias. Not the lot fell on Matthias. A lot fell on Matthias. Imagine what you would feel to know that you are replacing one of the disciples, and in fact, one of the disciples that actually fell away. And so a lot suddenly fell on Matthias. A lot of responsibility fell upon Matthias. A lot of pressure fell upon Matthias. A lot of expectations fell upon Matthias, both good and bad. They said, can you really fill the role of someone that was ultimately decided upon and chosen by Jesus? And then also the expectation, and will you also not fall away like Judas? And so he was constantly living with those expectations. What it must have felt like to be the backup, to be the replacement. I connect with Matthias as well because I have been the second choice a lot in my life. And I think you probably have too. From time to time, whether it's on a baseball team and nobody wants me on the team, uh, or any other thing in life when I think about my childhood up until today, a lot of times I'm second choice or third choice or fourth choice. And we all experience that from time to time. But one time that I remember it very, very well that I was second choice was when my little brother got married. Uh, my little brother was married almost three years ago. And he and his wife had to decide who was going to do the wedding. And they chose me. They chose me to do the wedding. I was so honored. I was so excited. Like, how much joy is there to officiate the wedding for your little brother. It was so cool. And I was so honored and I was so humbled, but I knew, and they knew that I knew, that I was the backup. That I was the second choice. I was the replacement. My dad was a pastor too. And if my dad was still living at the time that my little brother was married, my dad would have been officiating at the wedding. 
I would have been standing up as a groomsman and it would have been great and we would have all been listening to my dad who was a legendary pastor, one of the best preachers on this planet. And so I was second choice and I was honored to be second choice. It was great. It was all great leading up maybe, what, nine months that they were engaged until the wedding. And it was all good for all of that. And then uh, about a week before the wedding, suddenly I became more anxious and nervous and stressed than I've ever been in my life. I was so anxious that I was physically ill. I was the least pleasant person to be around. Ever. <laughs> I was so unpleasant because I felt all of that pressure, all of that responsibility, and I kept on thinking to myself, how can I ever preach like my dad could preach? How can I ever officiate at a wedding that my dad was supposed to officiate at, right? And I put some of the pressure on myself. I actually wore my dad's stole. And uh, his stole is already heavier than mine, but it weighed about 10,000 pounds when I put it on that week because I thought, there's no way. I'm the backup. I'm the replacement. And so lots of friends and family tried to calm me down. And you know, just an FYI, if I'm ever stressed, anything you say to me won't work. It works now. I can hear it now, two years later. I'm like, oh, that's what they were saying. Right? But at that moment, I needed to get myself out of it. And I had friends and family saying things like, you know, what you say at the wedding really doesn't matter. You know, things like that. And I was like, well, then why do I ever write sermons? Lame thing to say, right? Uh, but they were saying that, it doesn't matter what I say because really what I'm saying isn't about me. It's about these two. And it's beyond those two. It's about what God wants to say. So they said, don't worry about what you are saying. Just be who you are and let God speak through you. And I was like, all right. Uh, other people said, which I needed to remember and which I did ultimately remember was, uh, you aren't your dad. Stop trying to be your dad. Just be yourself. They ask you to officiate the wedding because of who you are, not because of whose son you are, right? And so that was a picture of them after they got married, and here's a picture of them getting married. And do I look stressed out? I do. Because even though I had a terrible time in the 24 hours before the wedding, once it began, I realized that it was about God. And it was about God using whoever we are. And I was able to not try to be my dad. I was able to try to be myself. And so rather than being a replacement, I recognize that we all have certain gifts, just like we talked about during the children's sermon, right? Some of us are good at this, some of us are good at that, and we can focus on what we are good at and allow God to simply use us the way that God wants us to use us. And so think about uh, Matthias on this day. We are all like Matthias. I am Matthias, and you are Matthias. Matthias was a replacement apostle. We are all replacement apostles. The 12 apostles that Jesus named and claimed and sent, none of them are living today. None of them are walking the earth with us today. We are the new apostles. Those apostles were called to share the good news with everyone that they encountered. The good news of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, and that's what they did. They went out and they told a generation. That generation became the new replacement apostles. And we are in this worship space today because someone was an apostle to us. Someone shared the good news for us. And so now, on this day, we go up from this place, being exactly who we are, the apostles of this day, sharing the good news with the generation of today and the next generation. And hundreds and thousands of years from now, people will continue to be worshiping because of the replacement apostles. I am Matthias, and so are you. Thanks be to God. Amen.